Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to learn a little bit about how to write for product people and I am your product school blog expert. So for anyone who's new, maybe joining us for the first time, I'm sure most of you are already a part of our community. Uh, as, as you can see here, we're already over a million strong, which is incredible. But just in case you're not sure who we are, this is Product School. We are the largest community of product professionals. Uh, we've got everyone from aspiring product managers looking to land their first job to uh, product leaders who have been in the industry for decades and that we're all looking to learn together and get better as product people. We have over a thousand events every year. And I think since 2020, that number might even have gone up. Uh, we host different courses and cohorts and certifications to help people level up their product management game. And we also have Product Con, our product management conference, which if you haven't joined us for that before, this is the year to do it. We've got a whole new platform and it's going to be great. Uh, a little bit about me before we dive in, because you might be thinking, why is this person going to talk to me about writing? Well, that's because it's what I do. Uh, at Product School, I am the blog writer. You can find me at productschool.com slash blog. That's where I live. Um, I'm also an ebook author. I'm a copywriter, a podcast host, and I once was the Product Con MC, and now I'm claiming that I am the Product Con MC, which is a bit bad of me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I dubbed myself the blog queen at product school as a joke when I first started. And unfortunately, it's kind of stuck. So that's kind of what I'm known as. It's very cringy. I know. But, you know, once these things have started, it's really hard. To, it's really hard to stop them. So, yes, I am the blog queen. And that's what I'm going to be talking to you about today. So contents, what are we going to be talking about? I've split this into two, uh, two sections because there's really two different parts to writing. There's the writing itself and then there's getting published and you need to know uh, different things about those two things. Um, so first we're going to go through some writing tips, including why write? Why does anyone do this? Why am I talking about it? Uh, knowing your audience, which as product people, you probably know that's very important. Where to get ideas from? I'm going to give you some general writing tips because it's something that I do all day, every day. So hopefully I know what I'm talking about. We're going to go over SEO very, very briefly, just because when you're doing your research about writing, you're going to see SEO come up quite a lot. And there's some things that you need to know and some things you don't need to know. Know. So I'm just going to give you the lowdown on that. And I'm going to give you some free ideas for uh, if you know that you want to write, but you're not really sure what to write about first, I'm going to give you some free ideas to run with and get started. Then we're going to go into getting published. There are two different routes to getting published, which I'll go into uh, more later. I'm going to go over some beginner mistakes that a lot of people make when pitching their ideas to a publication. And we're also going to talk about how to write for product school, because the whole goal of this is to get you writing. And we have this huge platform that reaches literally millions of people. And we want to help share that platform so that you can get your voice heard as well. So let's start with the basics. Why write? Why does anyone do this? What's the point? First off, it's fun. I think if you signed up for this uh, webinar about how to better your writing skills, you probably don't think writing is totally boring. So hopefully you're with me on that. The second is, of course, if you're writing for uh, professional reasons, it does raise your personal profile. It gives you more credibility. It makes you an authority on a certain subject matter. And um, it just helps people. It helps people find you online. Um, this is especially helpful if you're an aspiring product manager. Maybe you're looking to transition from another industry into product management and digging into some PM topics that you're really passionate about or really interested in. It can show those recruiters and those hiring managers that you're passionate and that you're interested. So it's a really good thing to have in your toolkit. It helps you to give back to the community. Uh, a lot of people who reach out to me about wanting to write on the on the product school blog are people who have decades of experience in the industry. And they say, I wish that I'd had something like product school and like this blog when I was just starting out. And now I'm looking to give back now that I've learned the lessons and I have the experience. So it's a good way to give back to the community once you have some lessons to teach and some wisdom to impart. Um, it also helps to boost your written communication skills. Uh, we all know how to write. We all know how to get our point across. But there's something about spending a lot of time writing that helps you to make your points in a better way. 
Um, it makes us more eloquent. It makes us better storytellers. And I think for product managers in particular, those are two really key skills that uh, we all need. So it's definitely a good exercise for product people in particular. Um, and on a personal level, it's also a great mental exercise when you've got a lot of thoughts stumbling around in your head and they keep uh, going round on a loop, it's really helpful to write them down. And that's not just useful for your mindfulness journal. It's also useful in your professional life. So if there was a time that you failed and you feel like you learned something from it, but you're not quite sure what that was, writing it out and telling the story about it can help you look at it from that third person perspective and sort of unpack everything that you've got um, involved in that. So it's a great mental exercise as well. My first tip for getting started writing is to know who you're writing for. So if you're looking to write your first great uh, fantasy novel, Lord of the Rings style, this isn't the webinar for you. This is more about writing for product people. So luckily we're all in the same boat. We're all looking to write for product people. Um, and that's easier for us because we are product people. So uh, we don't have to do maybe quite as much research, but still have to do research, trust me. Um, so yeah, the first thing is to treat your readers like your target market. In products, we all know how to have a target market, how to think like them, how to empathize with them. That's what you need to do for your readers as well, because one of the most important lessons you'll ever learn about writing, and I'm sure I'm going to talk about this later as well, is that the writer is not the one who's important. It's the reader. You're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your reader. So you need to know them almost as well as you know yourself. Uh, and the best way to know your readers is to be all up in their spaces. So you need to be uh, wherever they're hanging out, that's where you need to be. So if you're, let's say that you're um, a former recruiting manager and you want to help people know how to get into the product management industry for the first time, you need to hang out where aspiring product managers hang out. So that could be Facebook groups, uh, Slack communities. It's usually the comments on LinkedIn posts. Aspiring product managers are very easy to find. So you just need to find them and see what kind of questions they're asking and just get to know them a little bit. But we'll talk about that more in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, where do you get your ideas from? This is one of the things that I get asked all the time, especially as I think with product school, I write between four and five 2000 word blogs every week. That's quite a lot. Uh, and it's quite a lot of ideas that I have to generate. Uh, so people are often asking me, where do you get your ideas from? Um, and I think this is something that will apply to you as well. Once you start trying to write for the first time, you'll be thinking, what am I going to write about if you don't know already? Um, so these are different sources of uh, ideas for writing. The first is so much research. Half of writing is actually research. Um, unless you're writing from personal experience, which maybe it's all in your head already, it'll just flow out. Um, but you might find yourself needing to do a little bit of research, at least uh, at, least at first. Um, another source of inspiration is finding questions and answering them. This is especially useful for those of you who are looking to maybe give back to the product community or those of you who are looking for exposure in the product management community to try and uh, boost your personal profile. There are lots of different questions that are always flying around the community. Uh, the most obvious one is, of course, how do I land my first product management job? That one's been answered quite a lot. Um, but, you know, it's always worth answering again if you have something else that you can bring to the table. Um, people are also asking, what's the difference between project management and product management? Is the product manager a CEO of the product? Like these are questions that no matter how many people answer them, they keep getting asked. So if you uh, if you have a specific answer or you have an insight that's not been brought to the table before, that could be a great place to start. Um, and of course, as I've mentioned, writing your own experiences, um, not so much for me, but for a lot of the guest bloggers that we host, they want to tell their own story. It could be that they used to work in marketing and they want to talk about how to get from marketing into product and what skills they took from A to B, et cetera. Or it might be the time that they launched their own app for the first time and it failed and what they learned from that. These are all really valuable experiences that we learn from. And if you write about them, you can help other people learn about them as well. Um, another thing, this isn't so much something that you can act on 
um, specifically or there's not a specific strategy for it but it's just being aware of what conversations are happening around you so when you're kind of living in your own little bubble and the only things you read are your own emails and the uh, the two newsletters that you're subscribed to that's a pretty narrow worldview um, so it is useful to find those new spaces and just sort of uh, keep an eye out for what things are being talked about in the space you're looking to write for, which I think is uh, it's useful just for life advice as well as writing advice, but it's particularly useful writing advice. Uh, finding your style. This is something that's very difficult for new writers, but you'll find once you actually start writing, it is something that comes very naturally to you because writing and speaking are at a base level, they're not that different. So if you're able to have a conversation with someone, you are able to write. They are very similar skills once you get used to doing both of them. Uh, so my first tip is to bring your personality to work. Disclaimer, where appropriate. So uh, if you're the sort of person who has a really fun sense of humor and you like adding levity to some of the things that you do, don't be afraid to bring that to work. Don't be afraid to write in your own style of voice. Some of the best product management books I've read are actually really funny. Um, and that's something that helps them to be memorable, which brings my, on to my next point. Uh, don't just relay information, tell a story, because good writing is memorable writing. Uh, when we're writing blogs in particular, but also books, um, we want people not just to take away some information from what we've written, but also to have had a good time writing it because there's so much information out there and there's so many blogs and Wikipedia pages and websites that just give you straight facts and anyone can find that. But if it's not an enjoyable experience, people aren't going to carry on reading it. Uh, so if you write something that's fun to read, people are A, going to keep reading and B, they're going to remember it when they're done. So don't be afraid to add some personality to it. Um, uh, this is where I got ahead of myself. I've already said this, but it's worth saying again, the reader is more important than the writer. You're not writing for you. You're writing for someone else. So when you're writing, always keep them in mind. And it's useful when you get stuck. Let's say you're halfway through a paragraph and you can't quite figure out the right way to finish it. Think about the reader. Imagine that they're sitting in front of you and you're just having a conversation with them. What's the thing that you would say next? And you might even find that actually that paragraph isn't useful to them and that's why you're stuck. So you can just scrap that and move on to the next thing. Uh, and finally, this is my biggest tip out of all of them, is to read your work out loud. It's something that I started doing at university and I've done it since. My housemates are sick of me. They are always hearing me read out these long product management blogs, but it's so helpful and I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, so first of all, it's for spelling mistakes because uh, most of us, when we're about to publish something or about to send something or whatever, we usually give it a little read through just to see if we can catch any spelling mistakes. But when you're reading, you tend to sort of skim read because you've just spent however many hours on this document. You're not really going to be paying much attention to it at this point. Uh, when you read it out loud, you naturally have to pay more attention to the words because you need to read each one out loud. That means you're much more likely to pick out the spelling mistakes. And also, it's good to make sure that your writing sounds natural. Uh, often when we're writing, we can get carried away and we're writing one sentence. And next thing we know, that sentence is nearly a whole paragraph long. And that's not pleasant to read. So when you're reading out loud, if you find that you need to take a really deep breath in the middle of a paragraph, it means it's too long and you need to cut it down. Uh, so, yes, always read your work out loud, even if your housemates tell you how annoying it is. OK, I'm going to try and go over this as quickly as possible because I'm aware that we have a lot of techie people uh, in the community and in the audience and I might absolutely butcher this. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you what you need to know if you know nothing about SEO whatsoever. Uh, so SEO stands for search engine optimization and essentially it's so search engines know how relevant your content is, how easy it is to read, how high quality it is and that it's nothing dangerous or spammy. There's lots of different ways that this works. And especially with Google, the algorithm changes all the time. SEO is constantly shifting. Um, if you're a marketer, that's something that you need to know inside and out. It's something that we see behind our eyelids when we close our eyes at night because it's, it's quite a big, uh, it's a big part of our work. But if you're just an amateur writer looking to get published, looking to get noticed, looking to give back to the community, you honestly 
don't need to worry about SEO that much. It's when you start writing with a particular goal in mind and you're looking to get more clicks, more leads, more conversions, that's when you can worry about SEO. But for now, this is all that you need to know. So with SEO, um, my top tip for amateur writers in particular is to write for people, not for computers. So at the moment, if you're just starting out, your writing is for humans, it's not for search engines. So when you're researching how to write or writing tips, that, that's a really common, uh, really common search for new writers. Um, you're going to get a lot of uh, SEO advice that you might not necessarily need right away. So don't worry about that. Just focus on writing good content for real people. If you are a little bit more advanced in your writing, um, I recommend a couple of resources. So Neil, Neil Patel is my go to guy for learning about SEO. He's pretty much the king of it. Uh, and he has a tool called Ubersuggest, which is very helpful for finding keywords. And I also personally use SEMrush, which is uh, it, I guess it would be more useful if you're writing professionally. So if you're writing because you are in marketing, that's when that would be more useful. But it's just good to have bookmarked just in case. So here are my very general blog tips. These are super basic beginners tips that anyone can implement and everyone should implement. First of all, attention spans are short. If you've made it this way uh, into the webinar and you're still paying attention, congratulations, your attention span is like three times as long as the average blog reader. So what you need to do is keep your paragraphs short. People are gonna skim read to find the information that they want and they can do that more easily with short paragraphs. You'll find that your bounce rate is incredibly high if you just have one big wall of text because no average blog reader is gonna go through all of that. So try to break it up into short paragraphs, maybe two or three sentences per paragraph seems to work okay. It's not a, a golden rule for every single blog, but just in general, remember not to hit people with huge walls of text. You can also use subheadings to break up information. Again, this is good for SEO, but you don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, that helps people find what they're looking for much more quickly. Uh, and also just another little tip is beware of using copyrighted images. Uh, I recommend using free stock sites like Unsplash. This means that you can uh, add some nice illustrations and some nice uh, visual effects to your blogs without getting hit by a copyright claim. I used to work at an agency and we realized that our blog writer had been using um, copyrighted material and we got charged a huge amount of money. Um, well, he got charged a huge amount of money and it was all very upsetting. So just beware of using copyrighted images. Um, and I know a couple of you who sent me DMs uh, have, were asking questions about book writing. That's a little bit more specialized. So I'm only gonna go over this uh, very briefly. But again, if you want more writing tips, my, uh, my DMs on LinkedIn are always open if you want specialized book writing advice. Um, the first thing that I recommend when you've got a huge project is to itemize the key points that you want people to take, take away from your book, because no one is going to remember all 50,000 plus words of your book. Um, you're hitting people with a lot of information, a lot of anecdotes, maybe even a lot of exercises, but when they finish the book and put it away, they're only gonna take away a few key things, and you need to dictate from the start what you want those key things to be. Um, I also recommend that you write all of the boring bits first, uh, because like I said, 50,000 plus words, which is the uh, average length of a book, that is very, very long. And it's going to take you a very long time, especially if you're a perfectionist and you want to get into the second and third drafts. Um, and when we visualize writing our first book, we get really excited and we're picturing the certain things that we want to write about and we get really excited. And then what tends to happen is we write the exciting bits and then we realize we've got about 20,000 words of filler content left which is really boring. And we put it off and we put it off and we put it off. And next thing we know, we haven't published a book. We've got a half finished draft. So write the boring bits first and leave the exciting bits till the end. And you'll be much more motivated to actually finish. Uh, my third tip for book writing is post-it notes. And I'm sure as product people, I don't need to explain how useful post-it notes are to you. But um, whether you do it in real life or on Miro, I use a little bit of both. Uh, I like to split my chapters up into three different segments. So there's to do, they're the ones that I haven't touched yet. My first draft, 
and then ready because what you don't want to do is hit publish and you realize that one of your chapters is still in the first draft and it needs some fine tuning so this just helps you keep track of everything but i'm sure as product managers you would have done that without me having to tell you Okay, now here are my free ideas. So if you're uh, excited about writing, but you're not really sure where to start, or what, what I tend to see is that people have something that they really want to write about, but it's quite close to home, or it's something that they're really passionate about, and they don't want to start writing about it because they're afraid that they'll get it wrong, or they'll butcher it, or they'll do the topic some kind of great injustice. Um, that's fine. So what I recommend is doing a few practice blogs just to get the hang of writing. So for example, you could write a review of your favorite app or software. If you are writing for product managers, uh, it would probably be more useful if you used a product management tool. So you could think about two different wireframing tools that you've used in the past and compare which one you think is better and why, just for an example. Uh, you could also write the story of how you got into product management. Uh, I think that's something that's very easy. It's something that if you've been in, in any kind of interview, it's something that you've probably talked about before. So it's something very close to home, should be super simple. Uh, you could also debunk a very common product management myth. For example, product managers are the CEO of a product. Maybe you want to take that myth and debunk it and talk about why it's wrong. Or maybe you disagree with me and you think that uh, product managers are the CEO of a product, that's fine. You can write your opinion and maybe we'll have a little blog battle. I don't know. Um, you could also write about the time you failed and what you learned from it, because I think, as I said before, uh, if you've learned from the experience, someone else can learn as well. These are just some ideas. Uh, you don't have to even publish them. You can just write them for yourself and just think of it as uh, an exercise or a practice run. So now we're getting into the second part of the talk. Thank you for staying with me this long. Uh, maybe you were already a writer and you just wanted to come for this bit. Thank you for hanging on there. Uh, so getting published for me is the easy part because it's the part that doesn't take as long and it's a little bit less uh, less emotional. It's a bit, time bit less time consuming. Uh, so for me, yes, getting published is definitely the easy part of writing. So as I mentioned in the intro, there are two different routes to getting published in the digital age. There's creating your own blog or self-publishing, and there's also approaching other blogs and getting your writing hosted on someone else's platform. And I'm going to go into both of them now. So first of all, route one is creating your own blog or self-publishing. This is very popular, especially for aspiring product managers, because it's really easy. It's really quick. Uh, you don't have to have a wealth of experience to be able to publish your own blog. Uh, I know we'll get into it in a second, but when you're approaching other blogs, you do need to usually have some kind of credentials or you need to have some sort of authority to be able to talk on certain topics. But if you're publishing yourself, there's no rules. You can do whatever you like. It's the wild, wild west. Um, so if you're writing just for fun or you're writing for the first time, I recommend using Medium. You can also use LinkedIn Publishing, which... Some people would say it is better for job hunting because uh, those publications will go to your, um, your LinkedIn connections. So maybe it's better for networking, but I personally prefer Medium and I'm gonna go into why in a second. Uh, if you're writing a blog for a side project or as part of your marketing for your own business or your brand new startup, uh, you probably already have your own website, but I would consider using your own website to blog with rather than having a medium and then trying to drive traffic from your medium to your project website, if that makes sense. See, it's complicated just describing it. Just use your own website for that. So um, I'm gonna talk more about medium because it's the one that I recommend the most. So I think it will be more helpful to you uh, if we do a little bit more of a deep dive on that. So the reason why I recommend medium for uh, brand new writers is because you can write for yourself uh, there's not much uh, personalization of the platform. It's a very minimalist design, but that's because the focus is on the writing and not on having a fancy website. Uh, so it's very, very easy to start getting uh, to start writing on Medium. But also there are Medium publications. So it gives you the option to just publish for yourself, but then also to submit for publication. So you're kind of like dancing the line between the two and it gives you the option to go in whichever direction you want. So that's why I recommend it. Um, if you are going to submit to a medium publication, um, I think there's sometimes a little bit of confusion on how it works. So I'm going to tell you how it works now. 
Uh, step one is, of course, to identify the medium publications you'd like to write for. And I've included some of my favorites down below. If you're not, uh, if not, you're not used to medium or you uh, don't really follow publications. These are some of my favorites in the product or the tech world. Uh, number one is, of course, us. We have a medium publication as well. Um, and when you've decided which one you want to submit to, I hope it's me, um, you should contact the admin and express your interest in publishing with them. Now, this is better to do when you've already published a few pieces yourself and they're not, they don't have to be in a publication. They can just be sitting in your Medium account um, just so they can see a few examples of what you've already written, just to make sure they know that you like your right, they like your writing style. Um, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to figure out how to uh, contact the admin. And that's a very good rule of thumb that if they accept publications, they'll make it obvious. So maybe at the bottom of some of a few blogs or in the headline of the publication, it'll say, if you're interested in submitting a piece, please contact blah, blah, blah. They'll make it obvious. If it's really difficult to find how to submit to them, then you might be wasting your time um, and they might be a little bit too exclusive. Um, but what you might find is as you keep writing and you keep working on your own portfolio of writing, some publications will reach out to you and they'll say, hey, this is a great piece. Uh, we'd love to we'd love to have it published with us. Um, we've added you as a writer. Please submit it. You know that that does happen once you uh, once you start getting comfortable as a writer. Um, so once you finally found a publication that says, yes, we'd love it. We'll add you as a writer. They add you as a writer and then you can submit the pieces. Um, my hot tip is to not spam them with every single piece that you write because they can get tired of you very quickly. Uh, so I would say save your best pieces for publications and then your regular run of the mill pieces, maybe the ones that you're not 100% sure about, just keep them in your own account. Still publish them because you never know who's gonna find value in them, but don't submit every single thing to a publication. And the second route that you can go down is approaching websites. So this will be companies, I mean, probably within the tech industry or the product management industry um, who have a blog. And a lot of them will accept guest writers or guest bloggers, featured writers, uh, different companies have different words for it. We call them guest bloggers. Um, so if you're hoping to do this and go down this route, spend time looking at the blog you're hoping to feature on. So maybe you found a company that you really, really like. Let's say that you have some ex uh, previous experience as a UX designer and there's a, uh, a UX design tool that you really like and they have a blog and you'd like to write for them, just as an example. Um, my hot tip again is to look at topics that they've already covered in at length. So if there's something that they've talked about a lot, for example, I know on our blog, we have a lot of content about roadmaps and prioritization. So we're not really looking to accept any more uh, pieces on that topic. And I'm certainly not looking to write any more about that topic. Uh, see if you can find a niche that would be interesting for their audience, something that comes from a place of expertise for you and is something that they maybe haven't written about before. Um, that's a good way to get a very quick acceptance. Um, another thing that, um, these are a couple of things that uh, a lot of people who have never written before or have never written for someone else before may not know, it's just good to be aware of them beforehand, is that most blogs will have guidelines. So these will usually include things like a minimum and maximum word count, uh, the format they will accept the, the submission in. Most places don't like PDFs, uh, just for ex an example. They might also only be accepting blogs on specific topics. So it's always good to keep in mind that um, blogs often come with guidelines. Um, you should also be open to making changes. Um, in creative writing, we always say you need to kill your darlings. So there might be something, it might be a paragraph or a chapter, uh, even a whole blog or a character, whatever, that you're really, really passionate about. But as a third party, it doesn't really make sense. So you need to be comfortable changing your work. Um, of course, if someone is asking you to can do a complete 180 and change your opinion on something that you're not comfortable with, that's when obviously you should feel free to back away and say, you know what, I don't think this publication is for me. Uh, it still needs to be your words, your experience and your opinion. You also should be aware that you might need to check the exclusivity policy. Uh, for example, at Product School, if you're going to publish a blog with us, we require two weeks of exclusivity, which means that the blog will only be hosted on our website and our website alone for two weeks. 
After the two weeks, after initial publication, you're free to publish your own blog on your own website. It could be LinkedIn Publishing, Medium, like your website, anything. That's absolutely fine, but not with another company. So it can sit on anything that you own and the product school blog. And that's our exclusivity po policy. I think that's very run of the mill, um, but maybe some companies do it differently. Um, and one final thing is that almost all publications require your work to be unpublished elsewhere. So if you've published uh, your favorite blog, the one that you're really proud of with uh, any old website, and then you find, oh, actually, I really want to publish it with this amazing website that I really admire, you probably won't be able to do that because um, Google will flag us for duplicate content if we are hosting the same blogs all over the shop. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're pitching an article that you've already written, make sure you haven't published it anywhere else. Okay, now on to the beginner mistakes that I see all the time. And luckily there are only two. Uh, again, no shade if uh, these are things that you've done when pitching an article to me. It's absolutely fine, but just uh, don't do it again. Um, so number one is not paying attention to the blog guidelines. So the blog guidelines are there for a reason. They're there to help you, they're there to help me, and they're there to help us uh, make great content together. Um, so if, for example, I tell you that we need at least a thousand words and you come back with 350, that means that I probably won't be able to publish your blog when I told you we'd be able to publish it because you're gonna have to go back and make some changes. And if you take too long making those changes, you'll have missed your publication slot and we might have to wait another two weeks. Now this might not be a problem, but it's just a little bit of hassle. It's a bit of to and fro. Um, so just make sure to check the guidelines. Uh, one thing that I recommend is to check the guidelines once before writing, and then also once again before sending, because there might be something that you've forgotten. For example, we ask that you send alongside the blog an author bio telling people who you are. You might have seen the little meet the author at the bottom of our blogs, along with a headshot so we can include a picture of you. Um, again, it's just nice to have everything that the publication needs sent to them so they don't have to come back to you and ask for more things. It's just it's a little bit of a time saver for everyone. Um, and the second thing, if you're writing to me for the very first time, the biggest mistake you can make is not telling me who you are. I cannot count how many emails I have sitting in my inbox that just say, hi, I'm interested in writing for you. What's the process? What are the guidelines? And nothing else. And they've got a really generic name. Uh, they don't tell me what company they're working for. I can't find them on LinkedIn. It leaves me with more questions than answers, which means that sends that email to the bottom of my priority list when I'm looking for writers to feature next. So what you should do is you should tell me who you are introduce yourself and your experience in products. You can tell me what you're interested in, what your specific area of expertise is in. And another really helpful thing is to send me your LinkedIn profile so I can verify that you are actually in the product management community or in the tech industry, um, because we want to have like verified people writing for us. And uh, I know I'm speaking like me, 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 but it's the same for everyone. When you're pitching to a publication, you will need to tell them who you are and why they should pay attention to you and why they should publish your work. Uh, so one last quick little thing is how to write for Product School. Um, Product School, you can find our blog at www.productschool.com slash blog. Very, very simple. Why should you want to write for Product School? Uh, in 2020, we hit uh, our target of 1 million unique blog readers. So you've got a nice wide variety of people coming to the blog. And our community is quite special because it's a community of learners. So they're not just looking to skim over a blog and click a couple of links. They're looking to really learn something and they're looking to really grow as a professional. And your experiences and your writing can help them do that. So I think it's a great community to write for. It's very engaged. Um, the a little bit of insider knowledge coming to you from the blog queen herself. The content we're looking for at the moment is personal experiences in product management. So again, if you um, if you launched your own app a while ago and you want to talk about what the launch was like, that, that's something that uh, we'd be interested in. Um, and also technical expertise. So if you're really into data or there's something in AI that you think is not being talked about enough, we want to share our platform with you to help your voice get heard. Um, how do you get published at Product School? You might have seen the very conspicuous, very hidden banner that I, I slipped at the bottom of the entire presentation, but you can email me, ellen at productschool.com. 
Uh, th these tips that I've shared with you today, I'm not trying to be selfish. They're not all so that you can write for product school. These tips will generally apply to most publications in the product space, at least. Um, so, or, or even in other spaces. So if there's anything else you're looking to write about, these tips for pitching to publications will generally apply uh, across different industries. So I do hope that you found them useful. So thank you for sticking with me. I know that was a lot to take in, especially for uh, brand new writers. Uh, so before I go, I just wanna uh, tell you about some of our free resources so you can gain even more from this session. Uh, you can join our Slack community which is, I think it's more than 60,000 product managers strong now, but it's a really vibrant community, lots going on, including our events. We have webinars, we have AMAs, we have all sorts going on. And if you came to this because you are an aspiring product manager looking for your first job, we also have our job portal where we host some really cool opportunities. Uh, so that's it from me, lots of talking. <laughs> now I've got to get back to writing. So thank you all for being with me. And like I said, my, my DMs are open if you, want some, uh, if you want some writing advice and also feel free to email me if you have a blog that you would like to get published. It's ellen at productschool.com. So yeah, happy writing and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>